It turns out that breaking free of Earth's gravity is a lot easier than breaking free of the regulatory state. 2022 is about to end, but the SpaceX orbital flight is still facing an old problem called the FAA. Let's expose everything in today's episode of Alpha Tech. This summer, the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, issued a 183-page report describing more than 75 actions that SpaceX has to take before launching Starship spacecraft from its launch pad at Boca Chica, Texas. That document is brief compared to the nearly 400-page environmental impact statement that the FAA issued regarding the same launch pad when SpaceX first acquired the site in 2012. Both reports were mandated by the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA. That 1970 law requires that government agencies study the environmental impact of their actions, whether they're allowing construction of a new highway, permitting a new coal mine, or greenlighting a rocket launch. However, over the years, the law has morphed into a progress-blocking behemoth. In the average environmental impact statement, the most stringent level of review mandated by NEPA takes four and a half years to complete and runs around 661 pages. And that's up from 2.2 years and 150 pages back in the 1970s. The opportunity for public input on what happens when private property allows NIMBYs and other obstructionists to bring projects to a screeching halt, even when regulators themselves would rather stay out of the way. Projects that survive the NEPA review process seldom emerge unscathed. In SpaceX's case, many of the steps mandated for its Boca Chica site seem tenuously related to protecting the environment. For example, the company must prepare reports on the Mexican-American War and the Civil War describing events that took place within the area potentially affected by its space launches. It also will have to install five signs in English and Spanish outlining that history for the public. SpaceX will also have to give $5,000 a year to the Peregrine Fund, which works to protect endangered birds, and Friends of Laguna Atascosa National Wildlife Refugees Adopt an Ocelot Program. The latter donation will help pay for special events to raise ocelot awareness. Critics of NEPA argue that it doesn't protect the environment so much as the status quo, layering needless red tape on people trying to do new and exciting things. SpaceX must divert some of the time and energy it would have spent extending humanity's reach into the solar system to preparing reports on 19th century wars. NEPA, which increases the cost of terrestrial road and rail projects, also stands in the way of journeys to space. The surliest bonds of Earth may be the ones forged by Congress. More importantly, if SpaceX makes those changes, there's no guarantee the company would definitely receive a launch license for Starship. SpaceX has to do complete surveys, do pieces of training, and document most of the 70-plus mitigations. Then the FAA will analyze what they submit. Especially, just an explosion with Super Heavy on the ground was enough for the FAA to delay Starship a few more months. That's one of the reasons SpaceX is testing so slowly and so carefully. The licensing, quote, is still ahead of us, says Mark Kirasik, Deputy Associate Administrator for Artemis Campaign Development at NASA. According to Greg Autry, a commercial space industry expert, Many of the FAA 75 terms are very trivial, non-engineering requirements that can be completed at the same time as others. But he said Musk assumes everyone doing the job is a clone of himself or someone who's a genius that basically never stops working. Oliver DeWeck, professor of engineering systems at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, also expressed that he wasn't sure if SpaceX could complete all this work in just a few months. If everything is completed and the FAA is still not satisfied, will SpaceX still receive a launch license? No one can know for sure. And that's why Elon Musk has said these FAA rocket launch regulations are broken. He tweeted, unlike its aircraft division, which is fine, the FAA space division has a fundamentally broken regulatory structure. Their rules are meant for a handful of expendable launches per year from a few government facilities. Under those rules, humanity will never get to Mars. This means the FAA's regulations for space launches and rocket testing don't fit today's reality. 
The complex process is meant to enforce safety rules for the days when rockets were launched only a few times a year and not an aggressive program like SpaceX's Starship. Being a test, it was expected that things would go wrong, but the FAA doesn't see it that way. That may be why Musk says the current rules were meant for a handful of expendable launches, as an expendable rocket wouldn't ever have a landing problem in testing because they don't land at all. Instead of being able to accept that the Fireball was a successful test that gave SpaceX data to improve the design and operating procedures, current rules require them to treat it like an accident that must be investigated. What this shows us about the FAA is that it's clear that lawmakers and the bureaucracy itself need reform. Technology moves fast, and we need the agency to actually do the job that voters and their representatives gave them. It's supposed to be making sure that air operations are safe and shouldn't be stuck in regulatory and legal molasses. Even on issues that Congress gave full authority to the agency for, there's a culture of careful consideration, which we need, that isn't tempered with common sense. It's common for federal regulators of all kinds to be behind the times and a big pain to deal with. So this isn't a problem the FAA exclusively deals with. Much of it isn't the fault of any individual administrator, regulator, lawyer, or official. They're all stuck in a bad system that keeps the agency from doing its job. If it was all trivial, this wouldn't be a big deal. But new technologies save lives. When we can't save lives with new technologies because old fogey at the federal government's mired down by a plethora of conflicting and outdated rules, real people are hurt needlessly. Perhaps Congress should pass a law creating a common sense department and each regulatory agency that regulated businesses and hobbyists, you could contact that department and get the bad and outdated rules quickly reviewed. This department could be empowered to issue a temporary rule change for each situation they find lacking common sense. And those temporary rules apply until the normal regulatory process can incorporate the change. If something like that can happen, space companies could get things done and the public would be safer as a result. After all, citing a tweet from a Twitter account named Zafod, quote, other countries would give an arm and a leg to have a company that's as disruptive and as ambitious as SpaceX. I'm not saying skirt the rules, but government agency should show some excitement at what's about to happen. Be eager to participate in once in a generation events. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Hey, don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.